We're live on Spiritual Psychics TV with Paul Bannister and his guests for Spiritual Talk. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Talk here on SPTV. It's Thursday evening, it's 6 p.m. Where else in the world would you rather be than here on Spiritual Talk? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Richard's just making me laugh in my ear. But let us know where you're coming in from. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. This, these podcasts that we create, these interviews and our wonderful guests that come on, we like to think it's a shared experience. And especially some of the information they share is so valuable. And of course, we always thank our guests for giving up their valuable time. So wherever you are in the world, please come and say hello to us. We do have an absolutely brilliant guest on this evening, and I can't wait to introduce our guest. I'm really excited to get going, but I do like to say hello. I'd like to know who's out there, who's coming on. I'm not seeing anything in the comments yet, but I'm sure you're all watching. So, Oh, they're coming up now. So, guys, hello, everyone, wherever you're watching from. Just waiting for the... That's okay. That's okay. I'll just keep talking. It can be a lonely experience sometimes when you're talking to yourself, but I know you're there. Guys, I know you're watching, but the comments are taking a little bit of time coming through. Sometimes it's aligning all the channels together that we go out across YouTube. And if you're watching this on Catch Up, there's plenty of interviews in SPTV. There's a couple we've done in there. There's also my channel, Spiritual Talk as well on youtube we've interviewed some marvelous guests and we've got some great guests coming on in the future too hi terry louise and oh, uh, terry's terry's giving it away already she's also saying hello to our guest already so hi terry good to see you hi kyle as well and Carl, alice good evening wherever you are in the world let's know where you are as well guys jessica pond pound see so i need my glasses on this is why i need my glasses Good evening to you. And hi, Trudy. Oh, she's in Ohio. Absolutely brilliant. International. And Sue. Hi, Sue. She's 1 p.m. East Coast, USA. Hi, Sue. It's good to see you. Native dream catcher. And what a wonderful picture that is of a dream catcher. Very intense. Very intense. And Cheyenne. Hi, Cheyenne. It's good to see you both. And... Chris, hi, Chris. Good evening from South Africa. That's fantastic. We truly are global this evening. And Joan, hi, Joan. I think that means Liverpool. I think you're coming in from Liverpool. That looks like my kind of text, and that does. Christine, hi, Christine, and good evening to you. And everybody else that's sitting at home looking at their dinner. What better way to spend your evening than watching our show whilst having dinner. Hi, Christine. It's good to see you. Shall we introduce our guest now? Because I'm so excited. Our guest is an international best-selling author. She is a teacher, an international speaker, and also a creator of many angel card decks. Good evening and welcome to our special guest, Diana Cooper. Hello. Lovely to be here. Hi, Diana. It's lovely to see you again. And I, I know we recently interviewed you a, a month or, or so ago, but you've got a new book out that we really wanted to get on and talk about because we touched on the subject the last time we interviewed you and about the upcoming events in 2032. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what's coming? That's right. a big question, well, actually. That's a massive to me, question. My new book is called The Golden Future. Really yeah. simple. Yeah. And people keep saying to me, but what about my children and grandchildren, this awful world we live in? And I say, no, we are moving into an amazing time. Your children and grandchildren have chosen to come here now because this is such an extraordinary time for spiritual growth. They're here now to help the great shift in consciousness. And then in 2032, the whole planet is going to change. By 2050, the world will be 
unrecognizable. And so we're going to move into something great and glorious. This is the end of a 260,000 year period. Wow. So Atlantis ended in 2012. That's amazing. It's that awesome. Amazing. So then there's a 20 year period in which all the planets in this universe have to make a dimensional shift to a level higher, but Earth has to make a double dimensional shift because we were third dimensional and now we're moving into the fifth dimension. We are going to be bringing back all our gifts from Atlantis, which was the most awesome and amazing time to live, the golden era of Atlantis. And the thing is that we're going to be bringing them back into a level higher because they created that golden era on a third dimensional planet. Yeah. And now we're moving into the fifth dimension on a fifth dimensional planet. And so the opportunities are going to be simply awesome. We are currently going through the breakdown, the tower collapsing, the kitchen being demolished, if yeah. you like, because we're having a new kitchen installed. Something totally new, much bigger, much better. And of course, when you're going, when you're having a kitchen, a new kitchen, and you're going through all the cupboards being taken out and the builders coming in and breaking it down, it's chaos. You think, what on earth am I doing this yeah. for? But you hold the vision of your new, expanded, much better kitchen being built. And that's what we're asked to do now. All light workers are asked to hold the vision. New energies are coming in all the time. The frequency of the planet has risen enormously since 2012. And it's now going to start rising faster as we move towards 2032. No, it's, we're moving into a time of sharing, caring and cooperation. Yeah. The old masculine paradigm of pyramid power, of one person being the leader and everybody else kowtowing to them, that is ending. Which is why, of course, we're seeing such collapse all around us. Yeah. Because that's that's what's destined to happen. Yeah. Now, I wrote years and years ago about what was going to happen now. I know I expand on it in the golden future, my new book. But yeah. it was a we we've been just going to go through all the shifts very, very quickly now. And before before COVID, I thought, well, you know, I've made these forecasts. How on earth is it going to happen? We haven't got that long. And then suddenly lockdown happened all over the world. Everything changed. And I thought, wow, that was just an awesome thing. Now, there's a question from Lou. Yeah. Cook. yeah. What does fifth dimension mean? In the third dimension, which is where we've been for 10,000 years, people have their hearts closed and they were operating selfishly. Everybody wanted power for themselves. Yes. Then we moved into the fourth dimension. Now that's when your heart is open and you recognize that you're on a long journey, a soul journey. It's not just about this lifetime. And then in the fifth dimension, your heart is open, you act for the highest good of all, and you take decisions not from a selfish perspective, but from a higher perspective. Yeah. And so we're moving now into that golden fifth dimensional energy. We can see all the old third dimensional stuff around us, but give it no focus. Don't yeah. energize it because whatever you visualize, whatever you energize, that's what grows. So the more we focus, on the glorious possibilities ahead, the sooner it will happen. Yeah. And the more, the more amazingly it will happen. And yeah. remember, when we move into the new dimensions, everybody will be able to communicate telepathically. People will, so we won't have lies and dishonesty because that's not possible when you've got mind to mind communication. Yeah. Yeah, People sure. will see your aura. 
This means that everyone will be truthful and honest. We can trust people. All of that will return to us. And we have to just recognize that life, when you can be totally honest, you feel safe, you feel relaxed. Everything then starts to shift. Yeah. I'm sorry, I know you've been trying to ask a question. <laughs> and I have it's a word in edge, but it's, it's no, no, it's it's brilliant because I'm, I, you're so passionate about what's coming, and and for me, it's about a lot of people will be sitting at home. Well, what does that actually mean? And when you said about that shift between the third dimension to the fifth dimension, in real terms, and and we kind of ask people to come along, and if if your belief system, if you're not believing into the fifth dimension. Uh, I know it's relative to your own experience, etc. But, but this is really happening. So, so if you're feeling you doubt this, I c we kind of want to take you on to this journey to kind of open your minds a little bit to what Diane is saying, because there is so much happening, and I can and and truly vouch for that as well. Being a medium, I'm certainly aware of the energy shifting and changing. Even my the way I work is very much changing. So, so in terms of the old establishment, if you like, you know, the way in which we work and we live as a community, that's all going to break down. Am I right in saying that, Diana? Uh, I'd say it is breaking down already. Yeah. Have yeah. you noticed how children aren't wanting to go to school anymore because yeah. and teachers aren't wanting to teach? That's because the old third dimensional structure was built for the ego of politicians yeah. and not at all to do with what children needed. Yeah. And so as we move into the heart centered basis of what do children need? How can we serve them? Then we shift into a higher dimension. And furthermore, the new children coming in are going to need something very different yes. because, yes. of course, the new children are going to be much higher frequency. They're going to be have many, many more gifts that we can hardly imagine now. They're going to be very aware of the energies and what's going on. They'll probably be aware of the angelic realms, the elemental realms, and things that most people cannot see and have to take yeah. on trust. And yeah. so those yeah. children will be guiding us and leading us about what they need. And hospitals are collapsing in the new era there will be small health centers now we've had to have allopathic medicine for the past many years because there was such a backlog of karma not only that up to now if you didn't you carry on taking on karma of your family for up yeah. to seven generations yeah so if your great grandfather um did something awful then that karma gets passed on to his children. He, and they could decline it. Grandchildren could decline it. But now it's end times. So people coming in now, they have to take on all their family karma, their ancestral karma. We're dealing with country karma. All that is being cleared right now with the demolition that's taking place. Yeah. So then we move into something higher when it's about rebalancing. So yeah. health will no longer be about allopathic medicine. The pharmaceuticals will just not be needed anymore. The rising spirituality, the frequency, will mean they're just not wanted on the planet, not needed on the planet. People will go in and have herbs. They'll just have their chakras rebalanced. As we bring in the higher energies, then we'll be receiving our fifth dimensional health blueprints and everybody will be able to self-heal. So it's going to be a completely different way of doing things. All these vast, great hospitals built again for the ego of politicians. Yeah. Nothing to do with what people need, which is small, intimate, friendly, beautiful, harmonious places. I mean, we hospitals, the most yeah. difficult place to sleep is in hospital. And what's needed for sleep, for health and healing? Yeah. It's sleep. Yeah. So which is why so many people yeah sorry which is why so many people heal at home Absolutely. because it's more more of a natural and a, a recognized environment where we we feel feel safe secure and we heal better sorry Absolutely. um tara's just put a question how do we know in which dimension we are in at the moment 
Okay, Tara, how do you feel? Is your heart open? Are you loving and kind? What are you attracting into your life? Are you attracting good things into your life? If you are, then you're probably fifth dimensional. If you're thinking a lot about all the awful things going on in the world, yeah. watching television news and doing all that sort of thing, then you may well be stuck in the third dimension. And if you are and you want to shift and you want to shift to the planet and help the planet, then one, bring your life into balance. Two, start a spiritual practice that you do every day, whatever it is, whether it's chanting, whether it's a meditation, and do that regularly every day. And you know, that literally shifts your energy. Yeah. And it enables you to stay in a higher dimension, walking in nature, all those things, they make a difference to your frequency. I'm sure Paul will agree with that one. Absolutely. And one of the things I was going to say about the new book as well, The Golden Future, is you are also got, uh, I'm not sure how many chapters you've got on this, but pre preparing, if I can get my teeth in properly, for the fifth dimension. Right. Well, let's, if there are four sections in the book, and that's one of the sections where we literally go through all the things that you need to do to prepare for it. And basically, it's going through the chakras. But in each chakra, there are different lessons. And as we name the lesson, just reading it helps part of the clearance. And sometimes just understanding that means that it's gone. And that yeah. amazes me. And especially if you read it with intention. And so just going through each of the ones, whether it's opening your heart, moving into your higher heart, or um, claiming your power and overcoming your fear, whatever it is, as you literally go through the chambers of that chakra and read the lesson, your soul helps you to clear it. And of course, the archangel of each chakra also is immediately by your side, helping yeah. you to work through what that lesson is. Yeah. In fact, it's just awesome how much assistance there is for us right now on okay. the planet. Uh, Diane's, but my grandson is five and is autistic. He already senses a lot of things in the world. Right, Diane. There are lots of autistic children coming in now. What it is at a spiritual level for most, but not all, is that they're very high frequency. They come in, they think they're going to cope, but of course the frequency of the world is too low. And so they cannot actually ground their high frequency energies in. And one of the ways that helps them is to bring in the unicorns. The unicorns are the purest of the pure, and they very often can help an autistic child to ground in and bring their, their gifts fully into the planet. And that's what it's about. Of course he senses because he's high frequency, he's very psychic and aware, as so many of these autistic, high frequency new children are. And they're pure of heart as well, aren't they, children? They still have that the pure of heart, and that's a beautiful thing. And, and I guess mm. they can be an example to us of how to heal ourselves. Is there any kind of tips as well you could give us about ancestral clearing? Because that sounds like a bit of a bad rap that we've got to clear what my what my dad did and my grandfather did and his <laughs> grandfather. That, it's a bit of a bad rap, you know, for some people, especially. OK, let's say you're related to I'm so sorry to use this as an example, but it's a little bit extreme. Reggie Cray. Wow. That's well, I have to know somebody who is and ah. who has brought ancestral karma in. He's a mighty soul. He chose that because it was a great service offering to come in and clear that energy. Now, it's two things. One, it's an offering in order to be here and do that clearance. And secondly, it's a massive opportunity for spiritual growth. Yeah. Because if you succeed, or when you succeed, because there's so many energies helping us succeed yeah. now, then your soul moves on. Yeah, yeah. Thank All you of these that. things are choices. 
you know, yeah. these yeah. these children that come in and they seem to have such a difficult time. Wow, what brave, courageous souls many of them are choosing that difficult thing, either to clear karma or to help others. Okay, so I'm sitting at home at my dinner table. I've just eaten my pasta and I've just been at work all day and I'm a bit grumpy with the box, uh, the box, the boss. Um, and I'm kind of thinking, how do I then transcend? If I am think, sitting there thinking, I've never heard of this, but actually I would like to, it sounds fantastic to transcend. Is there anything for someone who's never heard and is beginning and how they can bring their mind to the possibility of opening? I think the first thing is the desire to do so. If yeah. you want to open, then you start looking for things to help you open. Instead of focusing on the things that keep you closed, which is what a lot of people do, you focus on what helps you to open. You also, if you're grumpy, it means you've taken in negative energy. So if you're grumpy, cleanse yourself. Two ways of doing this, get grounded by walking in nature and let nature purify you. Have a shower. Yeah. Consciously clear the energy, ask the Christ light to come in through the water. The Christ light is an energy of unconditional love. Now, it's very interesting, this question from Catherine at this moment. Yes. Yeah. How do you have a 21 year old with, I've never heard of it. No. This, this it, horror, lack of motivation, thank yeah. you for explaining and focus well you know everything in this lifetime is a mirror yeah. and so if somebody says to me i i want uh, i want to help my husband do something or other i say change it in yourself the minute you change it in yourself the mirror has to change or it leaves your life yeah. well obviously you don't want your son or possibly you don't want your son to leave your life and yeah. so the minute you change something in yourself the mirror has to change that's how the entire universe works and we never want to accept it because yes. we've looked in that mirror we've blamed the other person we've dumped our projections onto them and yet if we change ourselves, wow that we are responsible, we take full responsibility then for ourselves. And yeah. then the outer world in everything, in abundance, in our job, in every single aspect changes. Yeah. Responsibility is an amazing thing. And you're probably thinking that is absolute rubbish. I'm saying to you, try it. Yeah. See what happens. I remember this was years ago, my kids were, were being quite, they were much, much younger then, and they were being quite dismissive of me. And I thought, hang on here, I don't want this. Why is this? What, what are they mirroring to me? And I thought, I've got to value myself. I've got yeah. to value my time. That's what the mirror is showing me. And I made a huge effort to go inside, value myself, create my wise parents to value me. In other words, parent myself differently. Yeah. And my golly, from that moment, whenever they visited, it was totally, utterly different. And there was only one person that made the change, and that was myself. Yeah. So we're responsible for absolutely everything in our lives. I'm just making notes, okay, on that one. <laughs> if my children are listening. You know, the universe <laughs> is very economical. When I used to have clients that came to me, when I used to do one-to-one, -one, long, long, long time ago, and I used to say to my, to say afterwards, okay, what have I got to learn from this? That her, that person has come for me to heal something in me, and I'd look at it and shift something. So it was yeah. a very, very fast growth process because I took responsibility. But I said to my guy, well, how come um, these people come to me when I haven't fully cleared that problem myself? And they said, oh, the aspect of you that has cleared it, because these things are never just one day you're clear, one day you're not, it's a process. Yeah. The aspect of you that has cleared it, that's the part of you that's talking to them. And I thought, okay, I can understand that, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've got being another question here. And being positive are two yeah. different things. Yeah, 
Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that, Terry. Yeah, absolutely. And and it that's a lot. I mean, we go back about talking about healing oneself and, and again, um it's I I for me personally, I was always told from my guide that your intention is everything. And again, I would ask people to have that faith within yourself that that process is real. We've got another great question in from Joanne, yep. Joanne Lewis. When I went through my ascension, I was drawn to do, uh, uh, I can't get my words out, ancestral <laughs> healing. Ancestral healing. Is this normal? Yes. As you raise your frequency, you automatically have a desire to clear everything in your soul timeline and also to help others. It's um, ascension is not about just rising yourself. It's always about reaching out and clearing the way for other people too. That's what the fifth dimension is about. We are not here on the journey alone. Yeah. We're all here cooperatively to move forward in the fifth dimension. So yes, I'd say that was very normal. There, there is still a part of me, uh, I have, and and there is a resistance. And of course, um, and I, I and I don't whether it's because um, I have a healthy skepticism, um, but I'm totally dialed in with Atlantis, etc. And so many people did, don't even believe that there was a, 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 that Atlantis ever existed. But again, that's part of the three dimensional reality that we've created for ourselves. So, uh, but what I'm trying to say is uh, going along with this, I've, I've struggled with the ancestral uh, clearing and going back that far. I've also believed in terms of that ancestral cl clearing, you also help yourself on your cellular, cellular, why can't I get my words out tonight? On a cellular, cellular level. level, thank you. <laughs> So you're not then repeating the cancer that grandfather had or the diabetes that grandmother had. You're you're healing your physical being as well. Yeah. Well, every healing we does we do affects us at a, at a cellular level. If you yeah. bring in the energies of the angels each day, then they as they come through you, come down into your body. They are going into your that energy is going into yeah. your cells and it's shifting something i have a meditation i've been given to do i have to do it every single day by my guide and i'm going to do it and we're aiming for a big jump shift in the planet in yeah. uh, october october the 22nd it's an amazing day i've been okay. given this meditation to merge with your monad i do it every day and it's bringing in certain energies i feel them literally coming into my body but not only do i feel a different person but all sorts of things that i couldn't do before i can do now and uh, i mean i play I've been playing table tennis with my 18 year old grandson i've been absolutely Whacking myself. He said, Granny, I cannot believe that you're 83 in a few days. You know, it's like we've been racing around and jumping on trampolines and swimming all over the place. And part of it is an energetic cellular clearing yeah. that's taking place as the energies are coming in. Because it, it has been said that the physical body can survive 150 to 200 years. And it's through. <laughs> programming and and our, our you know i don't want to go too negative but our past experiences that creates our, our and also an expectation that we're only going to live you know around 70 80 90 and you know and that's not true is it we can actually excel that yes indeed but it's been part of the collective consciousness for so long that we have a certain lifespan and we are beginning to change and expand that and as we raise our frequency, we're starting to draw in energies of rejuvenation yeah. and regeneration. There are much higher frequencies when you're at the upper levels of the fifth dimension. You can start to draw those energies in. And very soon, that will be for everybody. And yeah. so that means that you can have perfect health again. I mean, you may choose to take undertake something to clear it for the planet. 
Yeah. Now that's a soul offering, and that's very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Carrie Mark Harris. Hello, Carrie. My mm. mental health is hitting rock bottom. I'm sorry to hear that. Nothing I do can get me out of it. Think guilt of my dad's death is the cause. Again, I do believe, again, with the healing that you can, I don't want to say help yourself, but there is a process of where you can help yourself with that. And again, we're so sorry that your father has passed and yeah. you have those feelings. But, but I always say to my clients, would your loved one want you to be in such pain of their loss? And, and the, sorry, I was just going to say that, that when I feel the energy of the loved one coming in, I always feel the freedom and the love that comes in from the spirit world. Uh, and they would not want us to be carrying that as a pain. So I do know, I can say that with some confidence. I hope that helps, Carrie. So you, what would your dad say to you right now? Yeah. He was in front of you. What would he say? Yeah. And he almost certainly with absolute love from where he is, as Paul has just said, yeah. he would say, let it go. I love you. And, you know, take that love in because guilt comes from fear of not being good enough, all the things that cause guilt. And if you take the love in from your dad, even though he's on the other side, he's only through a thin veil and his yeah. love is still pouring into you. Yeah. No, and also no, no human being can be perfect. I'm sure you did what you could. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we are sorry for your loss. Uh, seashells. Hi, seashells. How to heal my heart still in pain? I am trying to move on, but how uh, do to? Oh, sorry, I'm, that's just the way it's coming up. I'm so sorry. So when I am a person that's never giving up. Okay, not sure about that question. Can okay, you be? Okay. Well, what I would say to you, seashells, is it's nobody's saying it's easy. No. But if you sit down quietly and you visualize the person that you're hurting for, and you literally see the cords that are still connecting you to that person, and you cut those cords, and you do it meaningfully with the intention of letting that person go, whether they're on the other side, whether they're still here and you're getting divorced, whatever happens, doesn't yeah. make any difference. Cut the connections and then let them go with love see them going through a golden gate on their journey and then cleanse yourself just visualize a waterfall or call in the christ light and then visualize yourself on your new pathway then you're helping yourself move on and the more you can do it with energy and vigor the more quickly you'll allow your heart to heal because when you've done that then archangel chamuel the angel of love or mary will come in and literally heal your heart there is so much help available to us if we will only just relax and let it happen do you know, do you know Diana, listening to you your knowledge of the angelic realms is amazing and those in on that vibration and i've listened to you since i interviewed you i've been also tapping into some of your meditations i know my partner has as well we've really in, enjoyed that and you offer so much to people there's so much i would recommend guys uh not going on to diana's page are you on youtube aren't you diana yeah, yes, 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 masses of stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and it has a, a lot of self-help there stuff. There's some really good meditations as well that will help you to raise your vibration. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, uh, oh, Kim's put, uh, good afternoon from a scorching hot... <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yes. Well, oh, hi, Kaz. Kaz has put, during attuning to your Archangel Oracle deck, I received a vision of Master Jesus and sat in floods of tears because of the depth of pure love I felt. This has totally changed my life and how I view the world and now live spiritually. That's amazing, Donna. That that's is beautiful. And thank you for sharing it because yeah. 
the angels can touch you in many ways. I've had so many stories like that from people reading my archangel decks or unicorn decks or even the orb decks. You know, they, the energy just touches you when you're ready. And Jesus took the opportunity to step in and touch your heart because you were ready. That's fabulous, Kaz. It is, absolutely. And Deborah Long, I fully, ah, I fully believe I have, yeah, to choose to be my son's mother and he my son. He was killed. Somehow I could be able to help. So many other parents because of this channel, I know he is safe with me. I do not fear, could have learned my, uh, my life purpose through the passing of my child. Long, long post, sorry, she's put absolutely not, Deborah. It's absolutely fine. Don't worry. I'm glad you found some peace. All right. And you know that it's very interesting how often that can happen. And you chose that child because you knew that he had that length of time to live and yeah. that perhaps he would die in that way. And that was a sole choice before you came in so that you could then wake up to your spiritual path. Now, the other question people ask me is this. My child was drowned when they were seven or six or whatever. Where was their guardian angel? Yeah. Why weren't they looking after them? Yeah. I say, yes, their guardian angel was looking after them. It was holding their hand and helping them to pass over into the light because it was their time to die. Yeah. People find it so difficult when it's a child, which is yeah. totally understandable. Absolutely. But when you understand the higher perspective, then it makes a difference. I know somebody whose child fell out of a high story window, horrible, Gosh. horrible, and they were devastated, not only because of the child's death, yeah. but because of what the child would have felt. Yeah. But my guide said, no, that child felt just a moment of fear before the angels took him and helped him pass over. And so the, that process is always so much better than we imagine because the angels are there to help you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've heard that been said like from spirit myself. Rachel Broadway, hi Rachel, miracles do happen. Invoke angels as my one of my twins was so ill. The surgeon said not going to make it. I saw two angels by her bed and she is fine four years later. Beautiful. That's a beautiful story. That's lovely. And thank you for sharing that. And again, th there's so many things where angels do step in and help. Yeah. And my book, True Angel Stories, is literally full of stories like that. Um, yeah. It's it's really happening. But the interesting thing is that you invoked the angels. Yeah. So often they're waiting to help and they can't help because they haven't been asked. But the moment you ask, then they step in and literally miracles can happen. I, I know this is a silly question, but I'm going to ask it for people at home. Why does that happen? Why is That's that? What Why do we have to ask? Because we have free will. Yeah. Now, when yeah. you have free will, then no other being can step in and alter your, your soul choices. Only your soul can do that. And so if you ask, then that, then that angel can come in and help, which is why we can help so much by sending bridges of light. Every time I see an ambulance passed, I'm sure you do the same thing. I ask the angels just to go under grace to help that person. Now, under grace is the let out clause. It says if it's for the highest good of that person. Yeah. So you send peace angels into a war zone and ask them to help for the highest good yeah. and then you know that you're not contravening anyone's free will so yeah. whatever it is just say under grace but make sure you have created that bridge of light so that that angel can go and help them so it can we, make a massive difference to the planet so by creating um the karmic intention i guess about sending angels to difficult situations and prayer and hope and healing etc 
I'm not saying we get brownie points, but does that change our own comic responsibility by being this way? If you spend time every day sending love and healing out into the planet, your aura is going to reflect that. That means that you then attract different things to yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah. yes is the answer. If you're sitting there sending nasty thoughts to people, then that's equally going to affect your life and what happens to you because you're going to attract it all back to you. Can I ask you a, a question, Dinah, for, for just myself? Just uh, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Just yeah. Seashells. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Seashells. Um, I kind of a little bit obsessed with creator and my own connection to creator and and building that relationship with the creator, with source, with Jehovah, however you would want to what words you would use to create your God, if you like, uh, to give your God. From your perspective, how do you see that energy? Are, are you aware of the creator? Is the, the angelics talk about the creator? OK, well, what I see is that everybody has a soul. And then beyond that, you have a monad, which is the 12th dimensional aspect of you. Yep. And as I understand it, many people think of that as God. In uh -huh. fact, it is a 12th dimensional aspect of you. And then the creator is way beyond that. And the seraphim, for example, sing round the creator, the source, and they chant ohm, the sound, the vibration of creation to send out the energy of source into the planet yeah. that's been taken down by the cherubim and down through the frequencies of the angels before it manifests. Do angels appear differently to people? Yeah. As in, do they always have wings, etc.? <laughs> no, of course, they appear differently to everybody. And Paul is nodding away here. Yes, they do appear differently. Um, sometimes people see them as lights. Sometimes people see them as cherubim, which is a little fractions of cherubims. Yeah. Um, sometimes they see them as angels with wings. Now, if they do that, it's because the angel has decided to show their energy and their wings are the extension of the heart chakra. So they may appear to have huge, great wings because that's what their heart energy is at that moment. Yeah. Or they may appear as orbs. Now, on my wall, here's yeah. one. Yeah. This behind me is an orb. Now, that's several angels merged together, and that's the sixth dimensional light body captured on a camera. And, of course, in the last years, Literally millions and millions of people have captured orbs, have photographed orbs. Now you can see that one, you can see the orange at the top, which is Metatron. Then yep. you can see some yellow, which is Uriel, a little tiny bit of green, which is Raphael, then Michael's blue. So all those energies have merged. And that orb, that was angels coming to collect somebody when she ascended at the end of her life. So there are yes. just awesome things. That happen all the time. That's interesting because my own father, when he had his near death experience, when he was having an operation, he actually saw the, the colors coming towards him in the operating really? theater. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But may, they may be coming to help him. Yeah. Or take the decision. Yeah, he absolutely. He's, uh, uh, I remember him asking me, What do you think of this experience? My father had an operation. Um, where he was having a vein transplant across legs uh, from one leg to another. And, um, but it wasn't until a week later that the surgeon said to my father that he, he had lost so much blood, he died for about 10 minutes. They tried to keep him going. So he hmm. was very lucky. So it validated the whole experience for him. So he then actually bought me a book on mediumship, which opened his mind, which was fantastic. Oh, uh, so, uh, lovely. But but people do have these. I know when I, um, the first time I had cancer, when I was clearing certain energies from the planet, and at the end they said, the angels came in and said, do you want to stay or go? And that happened twice. They gave me a life review, and I said, I don't mind, whatever's for oh, the highest. Wow. 
and I'm still here. Yeah. And then okay. another operation almost immediately afterwards, the same thing happened. And so wow. I thought, yeah, I'm here, it's another job. Yeah, yeah. So, Hi, Eva's put a great comment on Yeah. Can you see my that? son was miraculously saved by the angels when his car was totally crashed, but not a scratch where he was sitting in the car. Yeah, again, that's fabulous. And it's yeah. another life affirming story. Yeah. And so yeah. often it's Archangel Michael that literally comes in and protects you because it's not his time to have an experience. If it's not your time to be injured and it's not your time to die, your guardian angel or an, an archangel will step in and make sure you're okay. And yeah. when we have that total faith, what a difference it makes. And Absolutely. sometimes people, I really think this is important, sometimes people worry about their children at school. Yeah. And you know what they're doing? They're sending a dark energy to their child and they're opening them up to something bad happen. Oh, really? And yeah, okay. if on the other hand, they sit quietly at home and they send light to that child, see them in a beautiful, solid aura and ask their guardian angel to protect them, then that child is totally safe. Furthermore, the bullying, the barbs of others just slide off them and then they stop. Yeah. It's, it's Really, among, there's one of my books, I tell the story of this little girl and she was being bullied at school. She was at her wit's end and I told, and her mum was sitting at home worrying and I told her, stop worrying, do not worry. Before, when the child goes to school, ask her guardian angel to protect her, visualise her surrounded in golden light and then go out and do some shopping, do something completely different where you are not thinking about your child and sending it any negative energy. Yeah. And she did this every day. Then I met her just about two weeks later and I said to the child, well, how's the school and what's going on? And she said, beaming smile, the bully has left the school. So well, the angels can work in so many ways so ladies and gentlemen you had heard it here first uh, and that is fantastic i would certainly recommend trying that if your child is having problems at school certainly try that but the, the faith is the key there i guess having that faith in what you're doing that process if you doubt if you doubt you yeah. let in lower yeah. energies if yeah. you have total faith it protects you totally and you can tell how much percentage of faith somebody has by the percentage of the success they have with that. If you 100% believe your business will succeed, it must, under spiritual law, succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claudine Acolia, hello, I'm a psychic medium. I have disassociative identity disorder at 16 years old. I don't know what to do with my gift. Interesting. Well, I'd like to explain the gift a little bit yeah yeah i believe they're saying they are a psychic medium and at 16 that's quite young isn't it quite young. very hard to take on at that age yeah yeah well i would suggest that you find somebody who is established grounded and you go and learn with them don't just undertake to develop on your own yes yeah yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Donna, can we go back to the book, please? Because I am quite excited about what is happening and what's coming up. Now, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of fear when we were talking earlier about the changes that are coming. There'll be a lot of fear because in the, in the news at the moment, people can't afford their mortgages. They can't afford to put no. the energy bills. No. And it's so no. scary. I know. And, and we, we've been told for a long time that if your energy is um, all based on oh, how big your house is, what grand car you've got, how much money you're earning, it's going to be a difficult transition. Yeah. Yeah. If you're focused on loving nature, doing what your soul wants to do, gives you soul satisfaction on creativity, on helping others, on helping animals, it will be a much easier transition for you. This is very much about energetics here. And uh, I think that to dissolve the fear, it's focus on the positive of what you do want, because ultimately we're all still creating our own reality. 
So it doesn't yeah. matter what's going on in the outer world. You as an individual have the are creating your own reality every yeah. single moment. If you're focusing on the fact that everybody's losing their jobs and you think, oh, I'm going to lose my job next. I'm going to lose my job next. Oh, yes, of course, the universe says they want to lose their job. If you're focusing on this is what gives me soul satisfaction and this is what helping others, the universe backs you and you'll come through it fine. And it's that, and that, out energies. And that is a useful tool, isn't it? Because the, it is quite a fearful thing. So allowing that opportunity to be, not be fearful, which in, in but that's the push pull environment that we live in. You know, the, the old ways are pulling us back in or trying to. Well, um, I think trying to is the word because yeah. they can only do it if we allow it. Yeah. And if we have decided that actually we are focusing 100% on the golden future, on what is positive, what is the good that's happening, then we will flow. And you know if you know if it's right because it's flowing joyfully. If it's not flowing joyfully, something's wrong, change it. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah, interesting question from Kim and an interesting experience. I'm just going to read it out quickly. Right before going to sleep, my mind wanders to the, uh, uh, and I place myself in my daughter's car in her place moments before her death, trying to imagine what she saw, felt and thought in the, that exact moment. Would love to know this so these thoughts stop. OK, I think she means what, what can stop them or? No, I think uh, well, how I read it is yeah. that if she knew that her daughter was actually OK at that moment, then those yeah. obsessive thoughts of what was she going through would stop. Yeah. And, you know, I can 100 percent assure you that as she was being taken over to the other side, that she might have been in a bit of shock and surprise. But it's like, wow. This is what's this is I'm moving on to the next stage of my journey. And this is amazing, especially when the angels come to collect you. You know, I was once sent a, a, a picture and this guy was 17 and he'd been given a motorbike for his birthday. Oh, okay. And he was absolutely surrounded by Archangel Michael orbs. And we said, oh, he's so protected. Yeah. Do you know what? A week later, he was killed on that motorbike. Oh. He said, why? What happened? And what they said was that the boy loved life, but his soul knew that he'd got another part of his journey coming. And his soul was so eager to get on to the next part of his journey on the other side that if they hadn't protected him, he would have died sooner and he would not have gone on to the amazing path that was waiting for him yeah. when he passed over at the right time. And yeah. so he was protected from going too soon. And my gut feeling about your daughter is that she was ready, not on this earth plane. She loved her life, no doubt. Yeah. But her soul was ready to move forward into the next part of her journey. And, you know, your soul's in command. That's the part of you that really knows what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Melissa. I wonder the same thing. What was my daughter thinking or saying right before she passed away in the car accident? Yeah. One thing is 100% certain. Her guardian angel had its wings around her and was giving her hope and comfort and assistance and depending on her frequency and of course Archangel Azrael always comes and collects everybody yeah. there may have been Archangels too depends on her frequency and so she would have been surrounded by angelic help or enabling her to pass over to where she needed to go. Diana just a quick question you have done so many publications on the angelics if i was at home sitting at home and i wanted to know more um what book would you recommend that people could pick up and read and just 
just to kind of well, get a... Guinness books are New Light on Angels and Angel Inspiration. Okay. Angel Inspiration has just been updated this year. Brilliant. Brilliant. And so that's got all the information about the angels, the archangels, the hierarchy, and lots and lots of stories. In fact, when I when I wrote that book, I was just finishing another because I wanted to go to Australia for six months. And so I was just finishing this other book, and I thought, I've just got time to do it. And then night, I wake up in the middle of the night with angels all around the bed. They're kind of levitating me and saying, we want you to write another book. It's to be called Angel Inspiration, and you're to start immediately. And so I had to get up in the morning, put the book I was writing aside, and write that book very, very quickly. And they gave me everything I needed. And I just got that done and the book I wanted to do before I went to Australia for six months. So if they want you to do something, yeah, they'll make to it do. happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hi, Martin. Martin says I had my NDE a few hours after birth. <clears throat> Sense and know whenever my guides, guardians are around. Grateful for signs, white feathers, or ports and synchronicities. Love to nurture animals. Genuinely and uh, genuinely and telepathically, life is lifelong learning. Love the archangels, their quick energy and their divine grateful of a lot of my in my life love and light thank you for that martin fabulous yeah and your near-death experience yeah probably really helped you to shift into that dimension it's, it's interesting because yeah cause, because a friend of mine had the same experience where she died in a car crash and she actually met archangel michael and she was sent back down to and she's actually working doing a lot of work with the angels Mm -hmm. So, um, which is a fantastic thing. It's interesting how that happens. It, is, yep. is it a case of remembering our purpose? Is that what it does with an NDE? I'm sorry, I missed it. I was reading. That's this. okay. Sorry, Joan. Um, is it a case when people have these NDEs, then suddenly come back and they remember what they should be doing? Do you think that's the purpose of the NDE? Like a, a little bit of a, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Get on and well, do it. At that moment, you're nearly giving a choice whether you go over okay. or whether you wake up and you come back and do what yeah. you're meant to be doing. doing. Yeah. Not always. Sometimes it's just a reminder. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Choice. OK, I better, I better be careful on that one because I had a, a visitation about a year ago when I was told the same thing. Come on, get on doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> So, <laughs> and did you did you change your I, life? Well, I, I believe I, I literally actually, and this is going to sound uh, a bit crazy, but I, I even gave up meat. I tried everything uh, vibrationally to help me. It's actually changed in terms of the way I work and the detail that I get from working. But it's more to it. I believe it's more about the healing as well. So there's yeah. a healing aspect to my work. So I think for everybody, however evolved you are, there's something to work on. We're yeah. in a human body. We've got all sorts of things to clear, as you say, ancestral stuff, our own stuff. And every day is an opportunity because the universe is constantly giving you guidance. Yeah. yeah. Giving you mirrors, giving you little hints, angel feathers dropping, as the lady before said. Something's yeah. happening all the time. We live such yeah. an exciting life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and and even I, I saw a feather on my shoulder the other day, which I'm pretty sure they may be working with the angelics. I'm not sure. But I've been having a few experiences with the angels myself. I'm, I went to brush it away. What's that? It's a feather. There was nothing there. So it's like, OK, I, I get the hint. So, oh, so it's a spirit feather. Ah, OK. It's a spirit feather. What's the difference? Well, one's in the physical reality. Oh, okay. and one etheric realms okay okay that was pretty self-explanatory i'll move on quickly so joan, joan hi joan if our emotional got overwhelming things you uh from the past i think she means how hmm. i put in balance to ground uh -huh. myself any advice grounding is about making sure that you walk in nature that you bring the energy down um, if you get headaches, then literally push it down. 
sometimes people are so ungrounded that they're not in their bodies. Push yourself back in. Go and walk. Go and hug a tree. And put your life into balance. Now, this for years, my guide said to me, get into balance, get into balance. And I was working, working, working and not doing all the other things, not I was doing the, all the mental stuff, but I wasn't doing all the fun and the friendships and all of that thing. And then it took time before I literally got that all into balance. And now I make a really big effort to make sure my life is in balance. And so are you, is your men, masculine and feminine in balance? Do you support yourself? Do you think wise thoughts do you give yourself constructive good advice do you say to yourself joan you're amazing look how well you did instead of putting yourself down now that's helping you on many levels to stay in balance but also are you working too hard or are you being too indolent or are you balancing it literally look at all the areas of your life are your emotions in balance yeah. and then take decisions to change those things write them down and then say right i need to do more of this and do it and the rewards are just awesome in your life yeah yeah and again i know there'll be people at home going hug a tree now this stuff really works this stuff oh, is absolutely. really powerful um because you are energetically drawn down by the tree roots and that helps you to ground deep into earth. I mean, you can also visualize your roots going down into yeah. the earth. There are lots of things you can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can we talk a little bit more about The Golden Future, the book coming out? I believe the yeah. release date is the 22nd of August, am I right? Yes, and if you pre-order it, then you can sign up for a free Zoom workshop that I'm doing, or actually it's YouTube workshop. And, um, so it's it's really worth doing that. Yeah. The book is inspirational. It's yeah. about where what's happened so far, where we're going, what life will be like after 2032. And there are cosmic things happening in 2032 that are written in stone that are going to help our planet move forward. But all the time there are energies pouring in that we can accept and we can call in. And so we are moving to a time of community, of togetherness, of yeah. oneness, of no boundaries, so yeah. that everyone is welcome everywhere, of total honesty. It's not, this past age has been separation. We are moving now into a time when communities get together, work together, support each other. Things like insurance companies at old age, we, they'll just be swept away in the rising tide of the frequency shifting. Yeah. And so when you don't have insurance, you rely on the people around you. Now, when that's all loving and supportive and belonging, belonging is a huge word for the new golden age, then you will work together to sort out any problems that you have. What a wonderful, safe feeling. You don't have to say, yeah. oh, is my car insured? We won't be living as we are now because we cannot continue to pollute the planet yeah. any much more. And so yeah. we will be bringing forward new ecological everything, basically. They will discover how to use plant materials, extrude them into different shapes and hard thickness, thinness, hardness that are totally biodegradable. Houses will be built. Transports will be built. Now, here's the thing that some people find hard to understand. When you are fifth dimensional, whatever you need is instantly available to you. So we are moving into a golden future where everybody is fifth dimensional. So if you need a car to go somewhere, a transport to take you somewhere, you open your front door and it's immediately there for you waiting for you. Now, to us, with our current consciousness, it seems like magic, but it's happening yeah. more and more to people. You start looking for the number of times you've thought, I could really do with that, and it's there. 
Yeah. And it happens for you, and it can be little things or big things. But this will be natural and normal. Now, if a transport is available to you instantly, you don't need your own car. So you don't need ownership. If a beautiful house is available to you, you don't need to own it because it's there for you. So it's going to be a time of sharing and caring. Yeah. Totally different energy. Currently, if you go to your local sports center, everybody has to lock everything away. Yeah. But when we're in the golden age of truth and honesty, all equipment will be available for everybody to use at any time. Now, yeah. there's also going to be a difference in the consciousness because currently, if you go out and there are a group of people playing tennis or bowls or something else, and they say to you, come and join us, you probably feel, oh, no, no, I can't do that. I yeah. might not be good enough, etc. But the consciousness is shifting. So not only did they welcome you, but you feel welcome and confident. And so everybody's world enlarges and expands. People do things in groups. Now, for example, a group of people want to go and play music together. So they just arrive by consensus. We're moving telepathically together. And so when they get together in a group, they decide telepathically what they want to focus on. And yep. then they link heart to heart and they create that music spontaneously from their heart. So whether they're focusing on joy or abundance or gratitude, they are all creating that. Yeah. We'll be moving into a time of manifestation where people can manifest what they need. We it's just like it's so different because in 2032, the heart centers of all the planets are opening and connecting. As that happens, a wave of love goes through the planet that's never been experienced before. That enables international cooperation to take place. Yeah. And that happens, a portal in China opens, radiating pure white source-like energy. And that again, that is going to send a wave of love around the planet, touching absolutely everybody opening the hearts of anybody whose heart isn't open now we're talking nine years ahead yeah that's not long so there are going to be big changes and as i said on the 22nd of october this year i've been asked to do this med meditation it will it's not available yet i'll be live in portugal and it will be available on live stream soon right where everybody who's ready can connect with their monad we will be receiving Order. angel energy. We'll be receiving energy from the cosmos to give us that boost and shift to merge with our monad. At the same time, for the first time ever, I mean, this is completely amazing. No, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came in and he, I mean, he was, of course, surrounded by incredibly high masters and he brought in and anchored the Christ light for humanity. They held that energy for three years until it was established on Earth. Yeah. On the 22nd of October, everybody collectively who is on the live stream or on the live is going up to three of the higher planets. There is Helios, which is the great central sun, where all the light of this universe is created. And we're going there to bring in certain energies. We're bringing them down. And there's only one person on the planet currently who's been prepared. And that's Tim Wilde. And he's going to anchor that energy for us at an 11th dimensional frequency into the planet. We are then going to Andromeda, which is the higher heart. We're in this beautiful energy. A perfect balance of love, peace and wisdom at an 11th dimensional frequency is held and we are all going to access that energy and bring it down and that's going to be anchored by Adrian Lee. There's one of five people on the planet that can anchor it at the moment. And then we are going to Lyra, which is 
through the stargate of Lara into the unicorn kingdom, collectively bringing down the energy, 11th dimensional energy of that pure white unicorn energy. Yeah. And it's going to be anchored on the planet by Avi, Avi that... Esther. And it's just completely awesome. Did, and when sorry, that guided did, me, for example, you... that she was the one to anchor this energy, I said, okay. So I just I found her and found the number. I had met her before. Yeah. She's absolutely amazing. Her daughter's only called Lyra. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So and, it, was, it was all pre-planned. And you've just mentioned a couple of people that I was hoping to, to interview as well. So right. fantastic. So them all. They're all amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So that is so important. Uh, we haven't forgotten Debbie's question. There is something else I would like to talk to you, Dinah, about the the rising levels of autism and also the anxiety that people seem to hold. Is there uh, parent, uh, parents that have children with autism anything we can do or is, is there anything we can help them or are they actually here for a reason to help with this fifth dimensional shift? Well, I think I've answered this question already because many, but not all, of the autistic children are okay. very high frequency children. They're the new children that have come in, but the energy around them is too low for them to be able to bring in all their gifts and talents. So they withdraw part of their soul oh, and they then manifest as autistic. And the one beings that can really help them are the unicorns. Okay. And when you can call in the unicorns who are the purest of the pure, and they can sometimes help that child bring that part of their soul back so that they can ground themselves back into a physical reality again. Because they've got great gifts, many of these children. Yeah. Keep the frequency of the house as high as possible. There aren't enough very high frequency parents to parent yeah. the children that are coming in. And yeah. so many of them have their 12 strands of DNA intact, but they cannot actually access their gifts because the frequency around them is too low. Okay. Now, if you watch television, you're automatically lowering the frequency. And so the children are bathed in that. It's interesting because a lot of autistic children that I know tend to go to their iPads. They tend to want to zone out of reality and just go into this little dream. Not, or, I mean, in, only from what I've seen, of course, of people that I know that they're very happy in that world. It's almost a disconnection, like you, you explained. Well, Maybe I don't think it's just autistic children. If you go into any cafe, unless somebody's actually activating, they're yeah. on their phone. Yeah, I, I, I witnessed that in Norwich today. Everyone was say. doing it. They were doing this on their phones. Everybody in Norwich. And I thought a plane could crash and no one would actually notice. Oh, hang on. I stop my phone. Pause it. And it's that's something that's going to change as well, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to feel the shift with that as well, which is going to be, for some people, I can imagine that'll be quite a difficult concept, that they won't have this interconnectedness with the internet. Do you believe the internet will survive? I believe the internet will survive, but not the third dimensional internet that we have at the moment. Okay. We okay. will move to a higher frequency. It'll be on different frequency bands, bands that are not harmful to anybody or any animal or any insect yeah. and carry yeah. high frequency information. Yeah. At the moment, it's carrying really low information. And so it's lowering the frequency of everybody. Yeah. And so yeah. if it's going to move to something much higher because that's what people are ready for and they want. Yeah, absolutely. At the moment, if you're third dimensional, you think fifth dimensional way of living is boring because you want to stay in the drama. Yeah. Now, there will be people who want to continue in the drama and they are not part of the golden future I'm describing. So they may decide to go to another planet, be somewhere else, but not part of the golden future of Earth that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. There'll be some people that will be fearful of that. But it, it, is it as simple as a choice? Is it as simple as that? It's a soul choice. 
Okay. It's not the choice of us down here yeah. in our personality bodies. Yeah. No, it's it's the choice of the soul that's in charge of your entire journey. Yeah. This is just one little tiny, tiny classroom on your journey. Yeah, absolutely. We better go to Debbie and, and, and her question. What little signs could our loved ones send? I've seen plenty of feathers, some float straight into interface. I've seen robins and squirrels looking at me, but something tells me I need to take stock and is uh, a high is it a high from loved ones it can be very often so many people especially robins so many people um say oh my husband died and a robin came to me yeah. or a butterfly landed on yeah. me and was it my husband and the answer is well it probably wasn't your husband it's certainly a message from your husband because <laughs> yeah. yeah. birds are messengers for the angels yeah. And so they carry the messages and they're a form that people can physically see and connect with and understand. Yeah. Squirrels, yes, but not so much. They can yeah. also bring messages, but any animal can. Yeah. So yeah. if that's what your intuition tells you, then say hi. Yeah. yeah. You'll be delighted that you've recognized it. And of course, the little white feathers. They are messages from the angels. They come down just to say, hi, we're here. We're looking after you. you now take care of yourself. We love you. On a slightly different note, talking about the, 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 the changes of vibration going to this fifth dimensional reality, all also what we're experiencing, and I've noticed, um, and again, I'm so sorry to admit this, I do get a lot of my information from them i don't watch the news i don't watch tv but a lot of it i i get from social media there's a lot of stuff that comes in and again it's about choice whether we listen to it but there's there does seems to be a lot of information out there of ufo sightings is this anything to do with the change of the frequency of the planet is it a collective one i don't go on social media this is probably my blessing because i um, the lady who works for me, Melissa, wonderful lady. She keeps changing the password, so I can't get onto any social media. <laughs> so that's probably a great blessing because I never see any of the stuff that goes on at all whatsoever. I hear from my grandchildren and things, stuff that's yeah. going on. Yeah. But um, yeah. no, I don't get that. Sorry, what was the other part of the question? So is, is there anything to do with what's happening oh, around the planet at this time? Yeah. Okay. As the frequency is rising, there's a growing knowledge and understanding about UFOs. And they're not only being sighted, but they're being um, filmed more often. Yeah. And people are now starting to feel more comfortable with them. Yeah. Whereas yeah. they did at one time. I mean, in my last month's newsletter, I put in a photograph that somebody sent me of a played in spacecraft. It's perfectly obvious, wow. perfectly clear. A round blue spacecraft, and then this month I think there's um, Pleiadian energy coming around giving heart healing to a child, and it's perfectly clear you can see it all coming around him. And uh, I often put in orbs with their explanations or something like that into my newsletters, but it, it's fascinating how clear they are now. Yeah, in fact, in one of my, one of my books about orbs. There's a picture of a, a spacecraft, but it actually looks like a lemon, but it's okay. placed firmly in the center of the photograph. And it's as wow. clear as anything. Wow. wow I know. That's so, amazing. Yes, more and more people. Remember, Avebury in the UK yeah. was the biggest welcome center for spacecraft for this entire universe. Oh, really? Yeah. And then the power was cut by the government who put a roadway through it. But yeah. now that energy is coming back and it's not only covering the same area, but it's expanding and becoming much bigger. And other places on the planet, particularly Uluru in Australia, are being prepared as spacecraft landing places on a much, much bigger level than before, so that we can have much more connection and communication with the planets, both 
physically and of course anybody can go in their spirit body yeah. and ask for healing or whatever i always say to people go to the pleiades ask to go to one of their spacecraft for heart healing physical healing i mean my dog had a big sore on her side and i thought oh if she's not well for another day i'm going to take it to the vet my guide kumikar said no don't take her to the vet take her to the pleiades tonight i took her to the pleiades next day right as a button <laughs> running around happy as a skylark not scratching or itching at all That's she received good. Healing. and again in my newsletters from time to time there's a whole articles on where you can go at night for what kind of healing and it's powerful it's yeah. good it's not just yeah. healing of course you can receive all sorts of other energies at night expansion in many many ways because we're leaving our body because we're leaving our body and going to a place where they can where they hold those energies yeah, I spoke to someone yesterday that actually said they're having that experience where they're coming back into the physical body, actually feeling tired, though, rather than feeling refreshed. OK, well, in that case, they need to clearly tell the beings that are looking after them because they haven't gone for healing. What they've gone is they're working somewhere, yeah. Yeah. working too hard, coming back in too quickly and not feeling refreshed so they yeah. need to say to their guides please let me rest come back fully refreshed into my body yeah. you're in charge you know you can't let people work too hard anyway yes in physical life yeah and they can do just the same when they're in their spirit life yeah yeah absolutely kathy's quickly asked i know that we are all protected by angels and guides but what does it mean when a medium tells you that you are extremely divinely protected? Well, I would suggest that it tells you that you've got somebody like Archangel Michael with you, protecting you, and yeah. that relax and trust that you really yeah. are protected. I mean, I know that I'm very protected. And one night, oh, this was a few years ago, I came out of a friend's house and uh, it was about more oh, 11 o'clock at night. And I'd been there for dinner. And when I came out, it had iced over the oh. roads like glass i didn't know what to do and i just said archangel michael i need help here and the most extraordinary thing happened i got into the car and this blue light shone all around the car on the road in front of me and i knew that was michael yeah. i had to go down the road turn a corner and these were roads uh, housing estate with lots of little roads and go up another road and that light stayed around me until I reached the main road, yeah. which was gritted, and then it went. Yeah. And that was like a physically telling me there was this light, Michael's light switched on. And that's being divinely protected. And, and that's a, 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 just quickly touching on that subject. People talk about protection. Do you feel that we generally need protection? Do you feel we I need? I think most people probably do. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, how can we ask the angelics to, is there a particular way we can do that? Is it for a meditation? Is it a daily mantra? What could we do to, to create that so we can protect ourselves? And indeed, to help us go into a more fifth dimensional existence. Well, the answer is whatever you believe in protects you. Okay. If you believe in the Christ light and you yeah. call in the glory of Christ, that protects you if you believe in it. If you believe in Michael, he protects you. If you believe in the pure white light, that protects you. Yeah, yeah. There are it's... certain things. There's a lot of very dark energies from Atlantis still around. Then call in the pure white flame of Atlantis. That is the pure protection for that. So, so, oh, see, <laughs> that's a whole subject that I'm really fascinated yeah, that, no, let's by. Let's go into that one. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> out there because it's very important at this yeah. time yeah absolutely okay and and that's definitely something we can talk about in the future we've got we've got about five minutes left so i uh, again just quickly recapping for people uh, of going into this fifth dimensional reality what are the simple things that we can do to start 
watch your thoughts, your beliefs, your words. Yeah. Act with kindness, act with love, make choices that are good. Be friendly to your neighbours. Start creating communities around you. Every single thing that you do makes a difference. Have a, a have a meditation each day that you yeah. feel is right for you, whether it's decrees, meditation, chanting, what is right for you. Make sure you have more joy and light in your life, more love. Yeah. Do what gives you soul satisfaction. Make sure your work is something that you enjoy doing. And if you're starting a business, make it something that helps animals, helps people, um, is creative, is loving, is for the highest good. And that will be supported by the universe. And Chris has just made a good point. What happens to people stuck or believe they are stuck in the 3D? Can people be stuck in that mode? Sure. But they're there because they want to be. Yeah. That's, and they I will then that. attract those energies. They like the drama of the yeah. third dimension. And if that's where they want to be, that's that's where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the book is out on the 22nd of August. And I am personally going to be looking out for October the 22nd for the that activation. Really yeah. important for the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Will that be on YouTube? It will be, um, yeah, we'll be sending it out so you can you can tune into it. Lovely. It'll all be on, in the links will all come out soon. Yeah, that's fantastic. We, we can't thank you enough for coming on today. We really, really appreciate your time and all your energy you've given us and to inspire us as well and, and to bring that understanding of the, the concept of the five dimensional reality that we're trying to get into. So we can't thank you enough for your time, Diana Cooper. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And lots Bless of people you. saying thank you already. Chris is saying thank you. It's good to see everybody, but we'll be back in two weeks time with another great guest. So stay tuned. But Bill, I believe, is coming up in the next half an hour or so. And another great program on SBTV. And, and if you've missed this, you can always watch it, this interview on Catch Up, guys, if you're just tuning in. And we are available on SBTV, on YouTube. And also, I'll put the link into my Spiritual Talk page on YouTube as well. So, and everyone's just saying thank you so much, Diana. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. And as they say, I think that's a wrap. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye, guys. Take Cheers, care. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.